Hey everybody, um, I am making this vlog to clear up what is one example of a lot of misinformation out there from people who don't live in the Bay Area. You know, one person lives in Tennessee, but they're Raiders fan and so on. Uh, in this case, this is Joseph Ray Marlini on Twitter, who in response to my tweet regarding um, another incorrect entry where I had said that actually Libby Schaffer loves the Oakland Raiders, but not how Mark Davis has treated her to date, not returning phone calls, working behind her back on stadiums in Carson in Las Vegas, etc. Mark Davis has shown a greater desire for the Raiders to be out of Oakland, uh, and that has been the case since 2011. And he claims the way I remember it, Libby took the deal Mayor Kwan had off the table and that is what started the issue with, with issues with Mark. That's not true. First of all, Libby came into office as mayor, uh, November of 2014. Unbeknownst to Libby, who was also Oakland District 4 council member prior to that and since 2010, and the rest of the city council, Mark Davis had started working in secret on Las Vegas according to ESPN earlier that 2014. On top of that, and this is not according to ESPN, but according to people I know and I've known for some time, the San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders teamed up on a proposal for Carson starting in the spring of 2014, and that was under the collective noses of both the city of Oakland and the city of San Diego during that period of time. In fact, it's on record where San Diego was told by Dean Spanos, hey, you know what, we'll wait until the fall of 2014 to take up the matter of a new stadium again. And when that was said, it was spring of 2014, there was no conversation, and yet it wasn't clear that something wasn't going, was was going to happen not for San Diego but for Carson later in 2014 and Libby came into office November of 2017 she called me with it asking for advice on how to work with Mark Davis I told her make him your partner sit you know next to him on the same side of the meeting not opposite sides work to have a one-to-one -one relationship and now the revelation regarding Carson uh, did not come up until the following year because here there was this illusion that San Diego was going to stay the Chargers were going to stay in San Diego the Raiders were going to stay in Oakland right but in 2015 on February 19th there was a press conference held to introduce this alternative plan this thing we're going to do just in case our new stadium deals don't work out that's how it was presented but in reality it wasn't that it wasn't that at all the NFL always intended to move the Raiders and the Chargers out of San Diego and Oakland so from the start it was set up to look like something that wasn't intended when in point of fact it was always intended but Mark Davis had his own backup plan, and that was Las Vegas. Note, in all of this, Oakland was never seriously considered. Now, you would say, wait a minute, what about Floyd Kephart? Glad you asked. Floyd Kephart was an exclusive negotiating agreement. But to cut to the chase regarding Mr. Kephart, who had started making presentations in the middle, part uh, March and then through 2015, the problem with Mr. Kephart uh, I don't mean that personally, but in terms of what he was trying to do, was he didn't have any money to do it. And yet, he was asking for money from the city and griping that the city and the county were not talking with each other and not working together and took a time to get them together. But the problem is that Mr. Kephart had come from another group that didn't have financial credibility and yet had an ENA and really had no business having the ENA. So he rescued the radio's project from that and all of that the Raiders did absolutely nothing themselves to get a developer 
or to say, hey, here's what we want, or hire an architect and give an artist's rendition of anything. The Raiders did none of that, okay? So, as it, as it happened, Floyd Gephardt wanted the city basically to give him money to buy the Raiders, a 20% stake in the Raiders specifically. In other words, it's like this. He wanted to use other people's money to get the Raiders under the pretense that he's this grand developer who can deliver in terms of a project called Coliseum City, and that wasn't the case at all. He made himself look better, bigger than he really was, but when the city finally asked for proof of his financial wherewithal, he had none. Now think about this. What if the city had given him $400 million? He used part of that to buy the Raiders. Next thing you know, you turn around. When the deal's consummated, he owns part of the Raiders, and we've made a, a new multimillionaire off public money. That's why that didn't happen. It had nothing to do with you know Mayor Schaff pulling the deal that Mayor Kwan wanted. It wasn't that at all. Mayor Kwan wanted Coliseum City. Coliseum City has lasted through three mayors, starting with Dellums. He didn't create it, but the group of Steve Lowe, Bob Lesty, and um, the late Frank Dobson, who was the architect, created the idea. I was at the introductory meeting on that when I was on the Sport and Entertainment Task Force that Ron Delmas put together in 2009. In fact, if you go here in Zenny 62 and type Coliseum City Origins, you'll see it, okay? It's a 30 minute video, you should watch it. Um, so that Coliseum City idea survived three mayors. It had a champion in terms of the administrator, first the person who, who would become the chief administrator, Fred Blackwell, who was head of economic development. The major problem happened when it looked like Quan wasn't going to win re election, so Fred jumped ship and became CEO of the San Francisco Foundation. That was in 2014. And so without an administrative intellectual champion, Coliseum City sort of went adrift like that. Larry Gallegos worked on it, but you know, Larry Gallegos was not put out there front and center as the czar. And you know, Libby, to her discredit, didn't put together a task force of the right people to put it together. And the Raiders did not insist on a task force of their own. So between those three problems, Coliseum City and the Raiders Stadium within it, was left to flounder. And so it wasn't until, and I think Eric Grubman is right, it wasn't until it was, there was an obvious threat coming, either in terms of Las Vegas. We, it, it was like we talked, we, in terms of Las Vegas, it was almost, it felt like after Carson we sort of dodged a bullet because the agreement with the Raiders said that if we're going to extend your lease, we have to meet to discuss and plan a new stadium. Well, in point of fact, the emails, and I have those emails, between Larry McNeil, who is the stadium czar for Oakland Raiders, not there anymore, and Claudia Capio, who was the assistant city administrator in charge of the project and is now gone. She lasted, if you think about it, maybe two years, right? Uh, that was over an infrastructure plan that was produced in 2012. I mean, for the Raiders Stadium and Coliseum City for 2012, all right? It wasn't brand new. It was just getting Larry and the Raiders up to speed on what had been done. Really, they should have been up to speed on it, but the only reason they weren't is because the Raiders had no stadium point person until the NFL made them get one. And that was in 2015. That's where Larry McNeil came in, okay? He was with the 49ers. Where he is now, I don't know. So then it became after Mark lost the... LA vote, he immediately got on a plane within that, within that month and took off to Las Vegas to hatch that secret plan he had been working on. No, Oakland had no chance. So this idea that you're spouting, it's just not right. 